What's going on YouTube? This is a Common Sense Professor and today we're going to be starting a new series of PLC programming. We are going to take a look at timers within Studio 5000. Studio 5000 has three types of timers that we'll be looking at. The TON, which is the timer on delay, the TOF, the timer off delay, and the RTO, which is the retentive on delay timer. Now today we will only look at the TON and we'll look at the TOF and RTO in a future video. When we talk about timer, we have to talk about the bits that are associated with the timer. And this will make a little more sense whenever we get into the programming. I will demonstrate these bits for you in a simple program and how they operate. Each timer has three main bits that are associated with the timer that we'll be using. The EN bit, which is the enabled bit, the TT bit, which is timer timing bit, and the done bit, which is the timer done bit. Now there are two other bits that are associated with timers that we won't be using at this time, but you also have the preset bit and the accumulator bit. The preset and accumulator bits are double integers while these EN, TT, and done bits are Boolean bits. Okay, so I've got my Studio 5000 already pulled up. This is a program that I used in a previous video. I'll be using the emulate software to control this timer so we can look at how these timers operate. So our timers is found in this section up at the top, counter timers. And you'll notice there's the TON, timer on delay, the TOF, timer off delay, and the retentive timer on delay that we talked about previously. In this section, there is also a count up and count down counters and a reset. We'll talk about those in future videos as well. Let's begin by adding a rung so I can add my TON timer. Whenever you add a TON timer, there are a couple things that we need to take note of. The first thing is you have to have a tag associated with this timer. Many times when you have multiple timers in a program, and I am very guilty of this, you'll just click this first question mark, which is where your tag goes, and just type in a name and hit enter. Now that looks like I created a tag for that but I actually did not create a tag. So if you do this, all you have to do is right click and just go to new T1 and it automatically brings up the tag creation panel. And this is a base tag. Generally our timer tags are always going to be base. So all we have to do is hit create. I want you to notice one thing that's important though. Down here in the data type, this is automatically selects a timer when we do it that way. Okay, be sure you keep it on timer because I've seen people who try to change this data type and obviously it does not work because those three bits that we talked about earlier are going to be associated with this timer, the EN, the TT, and the done. So I'm going to hit create. You notice immediately my preset and accumulators go to zero. The preset section of this timer is how long we want it to time. Now something to keep in mind in Studio 5000 is that everything is in milliseconds. So if you want this timer to time for one second, you have to enter in a thousand. If you wanted this time for 10 seconds, you, you have to enter in 10,000. So let's just go in the middle, let's do five seconds. So we're gonna enter in 5,000 for that timer, for that preset. Accumulator value is actually when the timer is counting and we won't manipulate this value at this time. If I was just to download this program, this timer would start timing immediately. But what I want to do is I want to control that. So I'm going to add an XIC here and then I'll just call this, I'm going to do new tag and I'll call this timer start. And then I'm going to create an alias because I want to push a button inside my emulator that actually turns that on. Now, whenever this button is pressed, this timer times. The thing about TONs that you have to remember is it's going to time up to five seconds and stop as long as this is pressed for at least five seconds. If I press this timer start for three seconds, this accumulator will count up to 3,000. But once I let off this and disable this timer, this will reset itself back to zero automatically for the TONs. That's very important to keep in mind when we talk about timers in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three rungs and I'm going to look at the three different bits so you can see exactly what they're doing. So let's just call these light one and then we'll do an alias. And then we'll do light two. And 
and then we'll do light three. Okay, so there's our three lights. Now, if we want to use those bits off this timer, all we do is come over here and double click our question mark. When we open that up, we can see the tags that we've created. And if we scroll down to the bottom, there's our T1 tag. If I expand that, the first two tags you're gonna see are the bits or the preset and accumulator. Notice those are double integers. Then we scroll down to our bools. Then we have our EN, our enabled, our timer timing, and our done bits. So for this first one, I'm going to use an enabled bit. Now this enabled bit, it's not used as much as the other bits because all this enabled bit does is whenever this timer is enabled, this enable bit goes high. So this will be high anytime this rung is high or this timer is enabled. Now let's look at our timer timing bit. What our timing timing bit does is it goes high as long as our accumulator is between zero and our preset value. So basically anytime this timer is timing. So once this timer times for five seconds, this timer timing bit will go high as long as this is held for five seconds. Finally, we got our done bit. So our done bit is gonna go high once our accumulator value is equal to our preset value. And it'll remain high as long as that timer's held high at that point. All right, so let's download this to our virtual PLC. All right, let's go into run mode. Now I am going to minimize this because I have our emulator down here and I'm going to use the IO data there. Now watch what happens when I push input zero. My timer immediately starts timing, my enable bit goes high, my timer timing bit went high until, and this is funny, this usually stops right at the accumulator value, but it went over a little bit, but until my accumulator value equaled my preset, now my done bit is high. Notice my enable bit stayed high the whole time as long as this was high. Now let's turn that off and watch what happens to my timer. Notice that it reset back to zero. My enable bit's off because my input to my timer is off. And then obviously my timer timer and my done bit is not working. Now watch what happens whenever I turn this off before I get to 5000. So I'm gonna hold this for about three seconds. And then I'll turn it back off. Notice we never got a done bit because our accumulator value never equaled 5,000. My timer timing bit was on for three seconds as long as that timer was still timing. But once I turn that off, our accumulator reset back to zero. So let's watch it one more time. Enable high, timer timing's high. Once I reach 5,000, TT goes off and done bit goes high. Now it's also important to understand that this done bit is going to stay high once it reaches that 5000. It's going to stay high as long as its input is high here. We're going to use that in future projects. Okay, so this is how our TON works and this is the bits that are associated with our TON. Again, the most used is our timer timing and our done bits. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.